please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. So firstly, the biggest news, I trimmed my beard this morning, okay? Actually, it's not really the biggest news. You probably would have seen that on my live stream on Tuesday. This video is going out on Wednesday, I believe, unless something else happens. I believe this video is going out on Wednesday. It's the splattering of articles from across the, win uh, the interwebs. The warm, warm splattering of pleasure across your chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, for uh, uh, Doctor Who articles. Uh, 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 so but the point of this video is I, I like to see the media's reaction to news. Not there is much news right now, right? We had a news frenzy. We had a news flurry. We had a, a, a you know, uh, unreal, you know un was it? A relentless news uh, um explosion well we have those a lot right we do have those quite quite frequently with, with uh uh, uh Rossley davis but it really really hit a crescendo last week as nolly was about to come out i just finished watching it freaking also what a shock i love it uh, uh well i didn't just i watched it last night i finished watching it last night so i uh uh, uh yeah i thought yeah i thought it was good but we had this huge huge uh uh, uh flurry of uh, news as Ralph C. Davis kept doing interviews everywhere. They kept, everybody said, yeah, yeah, knowledge nice. Tell me about Doctor Who, right? So we had lots of that going on. Now it seems that, you know, it, okay, imagine the analogies like this. Well, don't imagine the analogy like this. Actually make the analogy like this. Imagine it's, uh, um, you've been in some weird, torrid, drug-filled sex orgy, you know? Uh, uh, now, for me, look, I, I've got to be the only guy there, okay? If, that, if it's my fantasy, you know, I have a one penis maximum in my sexual fantasy. But imagine that. So, like, ah, it's, it's a small, you know, uh, a, a small smattering. Nothing, nothing at ostentation of porn stars. Yeah, about 10 to 12. Whatever. Anyway, so we the, 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 there was a uh, scene of absolute debauchery could be the Emmys, actually. The Emmys, and the Grammys, I should say. The Grammys uh, 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 did look a lot like that. I'm right? recording this on Monday, uh, February the 6th, right? And the Grammys did look like a weird satanic audio. But anyway, uh, uh, so that's the publicity. It did the analogy for Nolly. Now we're in the morning after where everyone's like shagged out, literally, and unconscious in a pile, and nothing's really happening, right? That's where the news state of news is right now. It is the uh, sticky car carpeted remains of a flurry from the night before but still there's a bunch going on and again the 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 commentary about it is the thing that interests me most because most people commenting are a bit dumb right are a bit dumb well i have to tell you the first rider in the screen rant actually made a good point uh, uh once or twice so uh you know <laughs> yeah that might happen again i'm not holding my breath baby i'm not holding my breath before we get into it can you hit the like button the share button and the subscribe button that is fan dabby double dozy man i was on such a uh, uh role of growth it was incredible last month i uh, uh like after getting uh, my subscribers going up like two a month for like forever, like for months and months and months. I had like a hundred subscribers join last month, so thank you very much. We we yeah, welcome aboard. It seems to have petered out again, though. Oh, <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. Again, that's pretty much what my wife says. <laughs> Although she doesn't say it was fun. <laughs> More like get off me. So I'm like you know, along those yeah, you know, little little wo wo you know words of uh, uh, you know of love and affection. <laughs> so like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, uh, all those things are very very fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, look in the video notes. You'll find my uh, Twitter now. Twitter has announced Twitter Blue is coming to uh, um, uh, Israel, so I am signing up for that. Uh, I want the blue check mark. Hopefully, they have all my my tweets uh, flagged as being potentially um, what's the word? Ah, uh, 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 distressing or something like that. I, why? So you got to click on them, and then he goes, "Are you sure? Are you sure you want to see the filth that the rabbi put out?" Yes. We're freaking sure. And it never is. It never is that filthy. So we got that going on. Uh, uh, hopefully that will that, that die down. But I have, it, once Twitter Blue comes to Israel, uh, I will be putting a lot of content on that. I've been doing shorter videos. I've been taking stuff from my live streams, cutting them down. I'm going to put that mainly on Twitter. I think I'll probably put it on Instagram as well. I don't know. I don't know. If, if I could just get a social media manager, uh, uh, that would be really, really good. But, you know, if I'm going to have money for social media manager, 
I, I think I'll go to a hotel instead <laughs> for a few days. That sounds a lot. I think that'll do much, you know, much more good for the channels. Anyway, like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, uh, sign up to my Twitter. Sign up to my Substack, my email newsletter. Sign up. Uh, uh, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, all the stuff. Yeah, all the stuff. It's fantastic. Thank you very much for doing that. Now, uh, uh, let's get into the article. So here's the first one. And yeah, we start We start with something that, you know, you, it almost certainly uh, be guaranteed for a title. Screen Rant, Screen Rant. So this is a story that's been really buzzing around recently because I, I did, again, on my Sunday live stream, I did the... Uh, uh, the uh, article in Doctor Who magazine about the new executive producer who has this awesome, freaking awesome production design background. And I, he did the production design uh, for the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy movie, which wasn't a great movie, but the production design was fantastic. How they found new ways to do, uh, you know, that, that didn't remind you of the 1981 uh, a very, very dodgy production design production of uh, Hitchhiker's Guys in the Galaxy. How they did that is, be, is beyond me. I mean, I love the design of Marvin. I thought all of it was very, very, very good. I thought Sam Rockwell was excellent as they thought. I like his second head was underneath his first. It, that, a lot of it was very, very good. The movie itself, eh. <laughs> sadly, not so much. You know, didn't, yeah, didn't do too much business. Uh, never made a sequel. I think finished it halfway through. So yeah, and I think it was just uh, it just didn't quite gel, which is the same. But as the executive producer, wow, this guy sounds freaking awesome, and he really brings in something interesting that uh, uh, the others don't. You got basically you got Rusty Davis, you know, the writer, and also he's a very visual writer. The Rusty Davis, obviously, uh, Phil Phil Coulson. Phil Coulson is a much more producer producer uh, of how to get things done how to get people to a to b that sort of thing then you've got jane tranter and julie gardner again these are more problem solving you know troubleshooting type people who are now like big hollywood executives if you see the if you see their uh, uh what was it their uh what was it publicity pictures they 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 are uh, 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 they are ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, look, they look, they're, they're very, they're like squeezed into these tight jeans and these, these like super duper heels, which it all looks excruciatingly agony. It doesn't look, none of that looks comfortable at all, but they do look very hot. I, I call, I call them, uh, 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 hot and milfy. So that was the four that we had before. And now we have this new guy, can't remember his name, as a production designer come in. Yes, this is very good news, right? He is, he is very good in that article in Doctor Who magazine. Goes on and on and on. We're like, please let me find some more filler. Let me find some more filler. You know, if you could write in Doctor Who magazine, like, honestly about what happened with fandom for the last five years and actually have an open debate about, like, why I don't like the Jodie Whittaker career, why I thought it was awful, you know, why I think toxic fandom are, generally speaking, the people who who, who love the Jodie Whittaker era. Like, what? why do I think that and have an actual open, honest debate in the pages? You wouldn't need, you would, A, you would get more people buying it, and B, you wouldn't need to uh, 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 find all this, like, pathetic filler. So something I find, I, without, I haven't read this article yet, yet but something I, found, I find absolutely hilarious in, with this picture is they got shooting Gatwick in front of the unused... Sylvester McCoy season 27 TARDIS that was, that was never made this is a model of it that was made in I'm guessing 97 98 there was a Doctor Who night on uh, there was a couple of Doctor Who nights on, on, on BBC2 and and this was made by Mike Tucker he had basically had the idea of having it uh, the the long you know um glass tubey thingy attaching it to the ceiling right back they it just seems to be the, the way to go so they uh uh they cso'd uh, Sylvester McCoy onto it and it looked very very good but like dude th this is not a, nothing like what this new uh um TARDIS console is kind of this this console room is going to look like uh what I can't even imagine what it's going to look like and I'm very excited about it but you know who else is very excited about Screen Rant right now let's see if they can get through this article with the TARDIS without mentioning anything cringe. I'm not hopeful. I'm not hopeful. Doctor Who's uh, executive producer, Joel Collins, that's the guy, has teased an ambitious and uh, uh, an impossible new TARDIS set, which is great for shooting that was first season. Well, it's probably great for most of the seasons. I mean, I don't think they're going to rebuild it. Now, what does it mean by impossible, right? I mean, that's really the question. Yeah, let me pull up... Uh, here it is. So this is the uh, uh, rendition done by Harry 
Harry Amet and I can't remember. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the other guy who did the console. The, the console, right? I don't think it's going to look like this. I see a lot of empty space, right? A lot, a lot of empty space. What is going in that empty space is the question, right? Is it going to be like constantly moving cogs and things like that? Like a, in, in like the inside of a watch? I know they always wanted to do something like that. Uh, um, so I, I, have, I, I have no idea what, it, where, uh, what it's going to be. I, I, this empty space, it does, I don't think we're, we're going to get like a... Uh, a danger room, like an X-Men danger room look, which is basically what, what this is. So uh, uh, I really have no, no idea what they're planning on doing. The, the news that shooting up this new TARDIS console is impossible is a fantastic sign for Doctor Who Season 14. I agree, right? And, and generally speaking, everything I've seen has been fantastic signs. The, the uh, uh, you know, I keep seeing on, on Bounding in the Comics, which is a great website, and it's been a website that's been vital during these... Uh, during these long uh, uh, culture wars, which have gone on and on and on, I think are over, right? I think I, I think the culture wars are over. Uh, and yeah, look, Marvel's still going to suck, right? <laughs> uh, Star Wars might not, right? I, 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 I have no idea. But like uh, um, the slate for Star Wars looks quite, quite watchable for the first time in a few years where it had... Yeah, I mean, like last year was just dire. I mean, really it had... Uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, uh, which was really, really cringe, and, and the nearly good uh, um, uh, Andor, which I mean, if you just cut that down to like, if you cut out eighty percent of it, you would have had a great show, right? I did. I did need to see, see episodes of uh, uh, somebody sitting on a bus, uh, a space bus, for an episode, right? It was just boring, man. It was insanely boring. Well, at least it wasn't boring and stupid, like. Uh, 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 Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, the design of a new console is often the, uh, hotly anticipated as the new costume. That is true. So ingrained is it in the identity of Doctor Who. Since the show, uh, since the show returned in two thousand five, there have been multiple console room uh, console room designs. So let me, we had three, four, if you count Jody. Why would you count Jody? You had uh, uh, the uh, Eccleston uh, 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 David Tennant one. Then you had uh, Matt Smith 1, and then you had, well, Matt Smith 2 and Capaldi, that's 3. Then they redressed it for Capaldi, which I don't think is a, it's the same console room. Uh, and then you had Jody. Uh, Jody 1 was awful, much like everything with the Jody era was awful, right? Um, I like the uh, excited, huge scale of the Eccleston uh, uh, David Tennant 1. The uh, Matt Smith one, I mean, I really think his first season was one of the best seasons of the Doctor Two ever. I, I, but I feel it was just a bit too whimsical. My favourite is the Capaldi TARDIS. Basically, my favourite is the Capaldi. That absolutely feels like what the TARDIS, to me, should should feel like, right? I love the Capaldi TARDIS. Will this beat that? I hope so. I mean, look. I, well, they're literally saying money is no object, right? <laughs> let's, let's read. Um... Since uh, now, here's the interesting thing though. This won't be, as far as I can guess, the console room for David Tennant in the 60th anniversary, right? That's like because I don't think it was built yet by, the, by when, when when it was filming it, unless he's going back and uh, uh, r shooting TARDIS scenes. But well, I doubt it, right? I doubt it. Uh, where are we up to? Right from uh, Eccleston Tennant's coral inspired TARDIS. To Jody Wicker, uh, Whittaker's Himalayan salt ca uh, candle and spider. That was awful. Again, it was awful. Uh, console has now been confirmed by executive producer Joel Collins that the TARDIS console will get a dramatic redesign for shooting gut was incarnation. So again, that's not uh, uh, David Tennant. Speaking of Doctor Who magazine, Collins teased the a wild new TARDIS. I'll be having like the big drug orgy sex party analogy that that I started with today. I don't know. Wild new TARDIS. I. Why? Uh, <laughs> why was there a a bed in the console room in, in, in Doctor Who Flux? I mean, like, why? Oh God, so stupid. Uh, giving credit, Doctor Who showed a Rusty Davis visual mind. Collins revealed this ambitious and possible tar design was one that the production team selected for Doctor Who season four, uh, 14. Well, obviously. <laughs> yeah, we know that. Uh, it's an exciting tease for the future Doctor Who uh, that ties more into the ambitious big budget era that the show appears to be moving into uh, in its sixth decade. It, it, 
it's not really about the money, honestly. I think it's going to look a bit slicker than it did before, but I don't think it's going to look... In, uh, again, I don't think it's going to look like uh, House of the Dragon. I, I think it's probably going to do better business than House of the Dragon, right? I think that... Uh, um, I, I think by the time you get to November, uh, there's... Uh, who was it? I can't remember. There's there, there, there's big things afoot at Disney right now. For, uh, essentially, there's a... Uh, uh, a Trump supporting right wing guy. Well, not right wing. I think maybe right or center guy uh, who's trying to force himself on the board. He bought a billion dollars of shares in Disney, and he's trying to rally the other shareholders to for, to fire someone from the board, somebody useless on the board, to put him on. And when he when he goes on the board, he's going to be. He is about bottom line, and like people are not interested in the bullshit you are making. I mean, look at the metrics for. Anything Marvel, right? Anything, well, like that. It was like, yeah, they have not done well, right? They coasted and they managed to survive till in, uh, Endgame. But uh, uh, it's over, right? Like, I, mean, I think people were, like tuned in from WandaVision a little bit. But they're all, none of these hold anybody's interest, right? They're not very good. And that's really the bottom line. They're just not very bloody good. I think Doctor Who's going to be good. I think it's actually going to make... I think I, I think it's going to have a broad base appeal. I want to tell you how broad a pay, um, uh, 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 base appeal is. I, I live in Samaria, right? You know, uh, uh, the Good Samaritan, you know that story there. That's me, right? That's that. that uh, that's where I am. I'm, I'm, I'm not very good. Anyway, but the... Uh, um, so, yeah, and it's in the middle of an ultra-Orthodox community founded mainly by people from Chicago, right? Every here is like old Chicagoans... Um, well, not me. Okay, but uh, uh, the people who founded the town. So the the rabbi, right? Not 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 the one I had a little contract on with. The uh, 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 the good one, <laughs> the one before him. I said, when he quit, I said to, I I said, oh, this is not good news. And boy, was I was I proved right on that one. So the rabbi, uh, one day, I I, I heard him heard his phone go off, and it was the David Tennant Doctor Who theme. He said, oh yeah, I love Doctor Who. Right, so if he loves Doctor Who, I think my you know my normie friends like it. Right, my normie friends who are into science fiction, they like Rusty Davis's Doctor Who. They're gonna watch this, right? They are absolutely gonna watch it if it's if it appeals enough to ladies, which I think it might well do. Uh, it's gonna be a mega hit. It's gonna have everybody from like kids, my you know kids and kids younger than my kids' age to old fogies like me to normies right it's gonna connect to normies right and again american normies not even english normies that grew up with it uh you know the uh giving credit show uh visual mind Collins revealed the ambitious tardis design uh was selected season one it's exciting tease for the future doctor fine yes okay we've just read all that we'll try that again uh, in the 4K, what's the headline? Was it uh, Doctor Who's Impossible Tardis? Sounds perfect. It really does. I had to tell you. Look, Mark Donaldson, you are not sounding like a schmuck today. I think you should look in the mirror and go, "You've done well, Mark Donaldson. Well done, well done, Mark Donaldson." In the 4K age of a more cinema, uh, cinematic-looking prestige television, a too, impo to a too impossible TARDIS design is exactly what the show needs. Yeah, it needs a bit of wow, right? A bit of a wow factor. The, and I hope it's not going to be like... And it, it, it sounds like a physical set from what, uh, what they described. I hope it's not going to be like the uh, the vistas we see in, in, the, in Marvel right now. Like, you know, uh, uh, I've seen the trailers for Ant-Man and Wasp in Quantumania. It just looks like a video game. I hope it doesn't look like a video game. I hope it looks like television, right? I, I think it will. Again, Ralph Steve Davis has a good idea what TV is. Um, the idea of a uh, shabby British police box, uh, police telephone box that's bigger on the inside uh, than, the, than it is on the outside is such a great idea that it's endured since 1963. Well, it only, only happened in 1963 to save money. Right, they, they, you know, it was like, well, we could just use an old police box. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. It was see, that's a sort of uh, uh, out the box thinking that's always made Doctor Who great, in my opinion. Uh, Doctor Who's bigger budget as a co-production between the BBC, Bad Wolf, and Disney means that the show can do justice to the central concept of TARDIS in a way that it's never quite been able to achieve. Yeah, the the in the. Uh, uh, 
initial uh, uh, in the production design uh, uh, phase of the 2005 revival. Uh, I've seen so I, I should have had them had. There's some great sketches by comic book artist uh, Brian Hitch, who did uh, uh, basically he did he basically invented the Marvel Cinematic Universe with a uh, with a couple of comics called the Ultimates. Uh, uh, check them out; they're actually very, very, very good. Literally, he he drew uh, uh, Nick Fury as uh, Samuel L. Jackson years and years before he was cast because he just said that's a pretty good idea. That who wrote? I think uh, Mark. Mark, Mark Millar wrote that, so it might might have been his idea. And yeah, they had Steve Buscemi. They cast as the Hulk. It was it was actually uh, a lot of the stuff was really 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 worked. So uh, uh, so uh, yeah, so he did the production design. Right? So one of his uh, 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 sketches, which I really liked, was imagine you know the dome of the tenant TARDIS, but it was a it's a it's a sphere, right? And in the middle. You have the uh, uh, a gantry with the, uh, the 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 console on it, and you have and you can go down below or up to the top of the of it with these different stairs. So and let's look back at this. That that could be something, something like we're seeing here, right? It could certainly be something like we're seeing here. I just think there's a whole lot more stuff going to be going on in this empty space right now. Then again, I think it's going to be a physical set, which ah, rather than virtual, which is really exciting. Uh, an episode like The Doctor's Wife, uh, where the Doctor struggled to depict the impossible scale of the uh, the police box uh, internal dimensions falling back on uh, repetitive corridors, or in the case of 1978's Invasion of Time, a Victorian hospital location that felt completely disjointed uh, from the in-studio console room. It kind of did. I mean, really, you couldn't pull some roundels up on where, wherever you were. It was, it was a really... Weird production choice, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, the Sontaran leaping over to the the swimming pool on the uh, leaping over the chair. Uh, uh, I think falling over us. I can't remember. That was all. Yeah, uh, uh, it was, I think it was Stuart Fell, wasn't it? I think I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> going back to Invasion Time. Uh, hopefully, this new Impossible Tardis will have more consistency, uh, creating a. Sp uh, Sprawling ship that uh, emphasizes the magic and wonder of, uh, of what the Doctor offers his companions. So yeah, I actually think that that's going to be a real vibe of the series. Like very, I think it's going to be a real joyful, fun, exciting series. And boy, do we need it, man! I, I mean, like, no one's looking at the window going, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, 2022, 2023. These years have been awesome, right? Absolutely awesome." I'm recording this on this. Uh, uh, Jewish holiday of of uh, um, uh, Shvat, which is the fifteenth day of the month of Shvat, which is the New Year for trees. And you know, uh, theologically, uh, the 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 year starts in September with the with uh, 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 the Jewish New Year, and the growth of the spiritual reality of the year, which which creates the physical rea re reality of the year, matches the agricultural cycle. So when the uh, uh, the roots start shooting out through the the soil that's essentially too much fun this this time of year right and so you basically be able, you're able to see a little bit of what this year is going is, is is supposed to be like right you're getting a little uh uh you know a trailer right this is like a teaser trailer that we get like a like a teaser teaser trailer and, and, and it was basically the day before america shot down an enemy aircraft over american space for the first time ever like was it I, when was the last time an enemy aircraft invaded american airspace right but it, yeah the story actually gets a little bit crazier when it was the only reason they shot it down is because they people noticed it this time and this has been going on for quite some time the chinese have been sending all these spy balloons to look at their nuclear arsenal and america's like yeah okay i guess we can't do nothing about that uh, um but they were shamed into shooting it down so again if that is the teaser trailer for 2023, we're going to want some escapism, okay? I mean, I don't know how you think we're getting to November without there being, you know, use of nuclear weapons. I just do not understand, right? I, I just want to ask Boris Johnson as he keeps going around, definitely trying to convince people, oh, yeah, yeah, we should get more war in Ukraine. Like, what do you think is going to happen? Like, I like you... Idiot, cockwomble, what do you think is going to happen? Man, oh man. So yeah, we could use a bit of joyful escapism, is, is what, what I'm trying to say. Uh, right. Uh, this magic and wonder will uh, likely be uh, selling 
Doctor Who season 14 started as a brand new audience, inviting them to inside for future adventures. Yeah, but I still think it's going to be very, very organically Doctor Who. Uh, what uh, what Doctor Who's ambitious TARDIS design reveals about season 14? Well, what does it reveal about season 14? Given, uh, you know, saying it reveals about season 14 is everything will be the best, right? Uh, uh, you know, I did the thing about when uh, Russell was talking about how he doesn't like diversity hiring. It's essentially, people were like, what? Security and security is a tool to be a, a diversity hire. I don't think so. I don't think he is. I think he... he I, okay. They knew they wanted a non-white, good-looking, younger bloke, hot young bloke, right, to be the doctor. A and I think that's almost certainly why he got in the door. Like, it'll be crazy for him not to get an audition. I think they he blew them out of the water with something that they weren't expecting at all. And everybody who's seen his performance has said the same thing. It's like, that's incredible. I can't, that is just incredible. Can we get it? Can we start seeing it, Russell? Come on. Give us a little bit of a trailer. That's the other thing he said. We got trailers for things that they haven't announced yet. Do you reckon they had like uh, um, uh, scenes of like, you know, ace battling Daleks for the, from the Ace Adventures or whatever they're going to do? Uh, I, I reckon really, maybe they do, right? I'm really excited. Uh, given the TARDIS, uh, given the TARDIS, uh, given that the TARDIS is the means to get the Doctor and the companions uh, to the location in each week's story, the ambition designer shooting out the ship says a lot about season 14. In what way? Please, pray tell. Uh, executive producer Joe Collins told Doctor Who magazine that an engineer was brought in to solve the engineering riddle of this impossible logic-defying set. Oh, come on! Now you're just tickling my balls, mate. Give me a hint. Right? Uh, which uh, uh, which no one in their right mind will ever have drawn in the first place. <laughs> I can't wait to see this. Uh, the demonstration is uh, th this demonstrates some passion and commitment, which uh, uh, to one of the key icons of Doctor Who, which uh, which will heavily imply the same ambition, creativity, and commitment will be applied to every other aspect of season fourteen. Well, that was the same in two thousand and five, right? People push themselves way beyond their limit, right? Way beyond what was normal to just make everything as perfect as possible because people were just excited by it, right? They were excited to be part of Doctor Who. They were excited about this new production because, and that excitement comes from Russell Davis. Now, listen, if you're younger, you you might not know this. Uh, this is something I have so, certainly noticed. Every organization, every organization, regardless of what it is, takes on the personality of the person in charge of that organization, right? It, so this production is going to be have the personality of Rusty Davis. Every office you go into has the personality of the person running it, right? It's really bizarre. And as you get older, you will see that's 100% accurate every time. I'll tell you something else, 100% accurate, which is really freaky, okay? Really, we have, there's a, uh, uh, what do you call them? In Psalms, right? There's a line in Psalms. Uh, which I can't remember which one called uh, in Hebrew. It's Petet Echeder Os Birlechel Chairozon, right? That the God uh, stretches out his hand and gives somebody what they actually want, what people, what they actually want. Now, you may say, wait a minute, I want uh, $1 billion. <laughs> $1 billion. Then I'll buy Lord of the Rings and make a better show out of it, right? One billion dollars you might and you don't have that no, that's not really true you might you might think you want that you, you're thinking with your conscious mind you, you know what your ruts on your your primal will is something very 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 different right you've got to be in tune with uh with 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 your primal will so here's the interesting thing if you look at taking that principle and this really works if you look at what people have in life you'll see that's what they really want, like like what they really prize. Like you've seen what type of home they have, what type of car they have. You know, they may be dissatisfied, but uh, it, it's what they, it's the minimum line, right? It's, it's a really interesting way to get an instant beat on someone, which is universally accurate, right? It's really, really freaky how much that works. Uh, Fine. So, definitely, passion and commitment to, uh, to the key icons heavily implies. Yeah, again, we, we, you know, we we had we had that in two thousand five, as I said. As Doctor Who celebrates its sixth anniversary year in twenty twenty three, the ambitious tar design is a is a testament to the show's origins. Since uh, Peter Bra uh, Bra Bra Hakey first design, really, that's his name. First design, William Hartnell's console room in sixty three. The show has constantly been uh, um, has constantly been. Ambitious and wildly inventive, despite the budget struggling to keep up. That is true. I mean, Web Planet, 
you can't say that's not imbi ambitious, can you? Absolutely not. Uh, but, uh, uh, so we're in a uh, budget is finally able to catch up with the wild ambition of creativity. N listen, no, it's not. And that's a good thing. Having an unlimited budget makes for bad shows, right? It, make, it makes for Marvel, uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. It just makes for bad freaking shows. You know, you lazy shows. That That's really what it is. Just, you know, you, people, if you, you just throw money at a problem, it's... Uh, um, it's much better if you have to think your way around it, right? If you try try uh, try and uh, work your way around it. So you know, I wasn't going to go for this article next, but I think I am now because you know, because we're coming up to the 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 birth or the rebirth of the sixth anniversary. Let's have a look back to two thousand five. Because again, I because I, I lived it. I forget many people out there didn't, right? Many people out there didn't, and this is news to them. BBC the BBC didn't know the Doctor Who's two thousand five relaunch will be a success. They really didn't, right? They really, really didn't. Russell Davis had no idea. Nobody had it. I mean, they hoped, right? And it was looking very, very positive the closer you got to it, right? But uh, uh, what what really made it a success well, was not that it was Doctor Who. It was that it looked so... Uh, it could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the American shows, uh, sci-fi shows of the, t of the day. And it, it, it was just very patriotic in some weird way. Yeah, Russell Davis was very good at that, having a lot of, like... Uh, British stuff going on uh, throughout the year. He wanted big red London buses and the London Eye and London icons all the way through it. He neatly understood the Britishness of Doctor Who is a major selling point, especially to the Americans who like to buy it, right? Um, but yeah, no, and, and it, having those great special effects and like instantly blowing away the uh, uh, the the memories of uh, which aren't real of like wobbly sets, which are real. Oh, I have to tell you, I watched Nolly last night, and that really did have wobbly sets. I love the recreations they did of uh, episodes of Crossroads, because they, they really know how intently bad it was. <laughs> they really have to know. But yeah, in 2005, it was a, re a huge gamble. Michael Grade was really, like, he was uh, uh, really not happy about it. He said, like, you can't put this in such an exposed slot, right? He had a mental image of what Doctor Who was from... Um, Colin Baker's first season. That, to his mind, was what Doctor Who was. I was saying last night that I would love to see uh, Behind the Sofa, which is when people watch Doctor Who and they comment on it, with Michael Grade watching uh, uh, Remembrance of the Daleks. I think that would be absolutely fascinating because I think I'll be blown away by by quite how good it is, right? Because it really is very good. It'd be like, wow, if they had shown me this, I would have, I would have promoted, I would have given them more, more money, more episodes. This is it. I really do because it. It's a good production, right? It's actually a good production with decent mystery in it. Do you remember, do you remember the, the uh, l little girl, right? Again, I watched this at the time. Which is, uh, uh, you had this wonderful little bit where the dog's like, five, six, seven, eight. It's a doctor at the gate. And you're like, what? How? How? What's going on? It was awesome, right? And when you came out of the, the chair, you thought it was Davros. It, 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 so much is great about uh, Remembrance of the Daleks. It's one of the... And not just one of the greatest Dalek stories of all time. It's one of the greatest stories of all time. It's so freaking good. So anyway, the BBC was not sure in 2005 uh, the Doctor Who relaunch would be successful. They were shitting themselves. That's true. This was... Je Jean Tranter, I think, basically put her neck on the line. Right, because uh, uh, this would have really, really hurt a lot of people's careers. I think Russell probably would have been fine, but it was so public, and if it really, really failed, they would have uh, uh, done very badly. Uh, and they had uh, uh, measures in place to keep Doctor Who going if the show had if if the show failed. Oh, that's interesting. Let's see what they had to say. Uh, BBC relaunched uh, the iconic Doctor Who in two thousand and five. Uh, after its original run ended in 1989. The BBC was not sure it would be successful. The 89 Doctor Who ended we're on the 8th Doctor. No! Jeez! Oh, fucking Christ! Really? Oh, fucking hell! Like, and these are simple facts! You can just Google! 7th Doctor played by Sebastian McCoy, not the 8th Doctor played by Paul McCann, you ignorant moron, cockwobble cunt! Oh, who wrote this? Jessica Smith. Je je do your fucking work, Jessica Smith. Oh, God. Such a simple, bloody fact. Uh, and seems to be the end of the British sci-fi show. No, the, Paul McGann seems to be the rebirth until it vanished, right? 
Uh, despite Doctor Who's ending uh, on TV, audience were still able to enjoy the Doctor's adventures. Like BBC Books, fuck off, you idiot! It was Virgin Books publishing the seventh Doctor. Novels entitled Eighth Doctor Adventures or EDAs. The EDA is probably 73 books overall and ran until the launch of Doctor Who 2005 when Christopher Eccles became the ninth Doctor. Yeah, that kind of killed the book range, right? They brought out a few books, but none of them were, were, were that great, right? The Eighth Doctor books uh, covered pl uh, plenty of the Doctor stories, including the Eight Doctors. It wasn't very good. Uh, a familiar enemies such as one of the, uh, one of the Doctor's uh, main enemies, the Daleks in War of the Daleks, John Peel, was one of the weakest ones in the range. To exploring the Doctor's past in the Gallifrey Chronicle, Chronicles, which featured the, uh, the first destruction of Gallifrey. The Gallifrey Chronicles uh, were the novels that were running at the time of the uh, Doctor relaunch, but were ended before uh, uh, before they could explore Gallifrey's restoration and the Time War. The re yeah, nobody knows about this. For God's sake! The re and also people have basically left the the uh, uh, the book range when Big Finish start started. Right then, people basically left Big Finish when the book range when the TV show started. Uh jeez, I just like I, I I'm I'm just flawed at the absolute unprofessionalness of this this article, right? It's just so stupid. The relaunch of Doctor Who meant that it will be the end of the H Doctor's uh, adventures, as the story would now be continued on TV. No, no reference. BBC feared Doctor Who's relaunch uh, wouldn't be a success, uh, even though the Doctor uh, Doctor Who stories continued since '89. Multiple failing uh, uh, failings to bring the uh, bring the title back to the screen meant the BBC did not know the B the 2005 relaunch will be a success. A lot of people in the industry were like, "Why are they doing this?" Right? <laughs> they really did. Yes. Uh, uh, in '96, uh, 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 1996 Doctor Who movie featuring the Doctor and the Master. Which Doctor was that? Oh, it was the first appearance of which Doctor? Which Doctor? The eighth Doctor, you dumb cunt! And it started, started with the seventh Doctor in '96. What came first, '89 or '96? Now, don't take off your your uh, uh, your shoes and socks. You don't have to use your toes. You can use a calculator. Moron. Ah. Uh. Was uh, uh, in Africa, it was released with the intention of sparking a new series that never transpired. Other revamps saw Steven Spielberg production company possibly reviving Doctor Who under American remake called The Chronicles of Doctor Who. It's the same fucking thing! Ah! What? How? How did you get every fact wrong in this story? Who is this person? Jessica Smith? Let's see if they, we, we, can find, we can find Jessica Smith's Twitter. All right? Because... It's unbelievable. After watching, uh, watching anything from the forties uh, noir classic to a Harry Potter adventure, more uh, more than enough time. Jessica loves screen, uh, and recently uh, received a master's degree in film and TV studies from the University of Nottingham. They should give you should give it back. Combining her education and passion on TV, Jess has recently joined the Screen Rant team as a features writer. The first explore. Uh, movie success. Screen Rant has provided Jess with a perfect outlet for these findings. Jess is aspiring to build a career in the screen industry in developing development production screenwriting as well as uh, continuing to write about movies and shows she loves. Despite uh, watching for uh, uh, despite watching uh, uh, and studying plenty of her of the most critically acclaimed movies, Jessica is assigned for a B-list rom-com. Of course you are, you're a chick. Uh, and believes that everyone needs to watch uh, and enjoy awful movies for nothing more than pure escapism. Now, I do tend to agree with you there. Uh, oh God, yeah, this is... Do they have a Twitter? What are, what, are, what are dumb things that she said? One bizarre cameo that Brooklyn 99 and you girl share. Uh, shotgun wedding cut, like, yeah. After Wednesday, uh, season two redeemed Tyler. Why? Why it shouldn't? First science fiction movie is over 120 years old. Okay, fine. I, it, this is this is not not a clever person. Yeah, honestly, 
Oh, no, just why? What, how do you get so much wrong? And by the way, Vampire Science, the book by, I think, Kate Orman and maybe jo uh, Jonathan Bloom, uh, uh, risks very heavily on it being set on the uh, being set in San Francisco after this. Uh, 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 so dumb. Uh, BBC, so what was it? So the script's having, uh, well, the script's having huge changes in the characters like the Daleks were, uh, that were never accepted and the series was never made. It's the same thing, the Chronicles of Doctor Who. What? Why are you talking about something you have no idea about? The BBC regained the rights uh, uh, and new Im uh, uh, imagings of Doctor Who series were made, uh, including fancy t uh, TV shows and a gothic reimagining. Yeah, no, that's when the movie came out, right? When the, yeah, they, that's why Virgin Publishing ended, right? Because they, they, they wanted to bring everything in-house in the BBC, uh, and that's why, why the EDA started. I mean, you've got so many facts here, but you mi mix them all up. It's so weird. Uh, also, writers who eventually became uh, uh, writers eventually be also writers who eventually became writers and actors on the show, such as Matthew Graham and Mark Gattis, took on the create uh, creating new versions that never transpired. What, what what Matthew Graham thing was it? That never happened, but ultimately helped to build up the, to the two thousand five relaunch with all. Uh, with all the failed attempts at relaunching Doctor Who, no one is surprised the BBC was not sure whether the 2005 relaunch will be successful. It has nothing to do with that! Oh, my God! Uh, so the BBC prepared for another failure. How the BBC ensured Doctor Who could continue if the relaunch failed? Well, again, it's still licensed to Big Finish for, at that point, which lost half its bloody sales. Right. Doctor Who is an iconic show and a strong part of the BBC's history, so BBC wanted to ensure it could continue even if the 2005 relaunch failed. And this is all nonsense. To do this, BBC relied on the eighth Doctor Adventures, in particular the final novel, The Gallifrey Chron Chronicles. In an interview, Lance Parkin, who was pers pissed off... Okay, Lance Parkin, if, if I'm, rem if I'm rem uh, remembering this correctly, right, was not invited to be part of the new production and hated it Lance Parkin again if it's who I'm if I'm, if I'm thinking of right wrote uh, these scathing criticisms of the unquiet dead as like uh, uh, being terrified of Britain being invaded by foreigners and just like this insane it, well, not insane by 2023 standards but insane by 2005 standards rants against him right um Right, and it was basically because he was he wasn't given much of a uh, uh, much of a look at right. So, in an interview, Lance Parkin, author of the uh, of the Eighth Doctor Adventures, one of the authors, he was a big author of the Eighth Doctor Adventures. In all fairness, hey, let me see, let me see what Lance Parkin's Lance Parkin book books. I should have done Lance Parkin Doctor Who books. And second. Well, we've got the Gallifrey Chronicles, but here, Lance Parkin, author. So he did... Okay, so he did the, the uh, 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 Virgin uh, books as well. Oh, he did Cold Fusion. People like that. The Dying Days, that was his. Base Planet Mars, that was without the Doctor. Uh, the Infinity Doctor, Father Time, Trading Futures, uh, and uh, uh, the Gallifrey Chronicle. Chronicle. Yeah, yeah uh, okay, fine, whatever. Okay. Lance Parkin, I don't think it is Lance Parkin who I was thinking of. It was... Who wrote Alien Bodies? Wait, 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 wait. Does it... Do we have a reference? Hang on, hang on, hang on. We'll do Doctor Who Alien Bodies. Doctor Who, which was available this week on my Substack. Go sign up my Substack. Uh, I send out an uh, out-of-print uh, Doctor Who novel every week. Alien Borders. Lawrence Miles. Yeah, it's Lawrence Miles, not Lance Parkin. All right? It might... It oh, could be either. Actually, it could be... Let's be a mic. It could be either. Right? Uh, right. In an interview, Lance Parkin revealed that he never wrote a conclusion of the Eighth Doctor Adventure as requested by BBC via uh, Unreality FS. Parkin said that despite the uh, it seeming bizarre now, even with the near cancellation of Doctor Who, BBC were keeping their options open. If the if Doctor had bombed on telly, 
it would have been over and done in 13 weeks. So part of the brief was to leave things open just in case the EDAs need to pick things up where they left off. Okay, yeah. Oh, this whole article written around this one snippet of information, this one teeny tiny snippet, this whole waste of space article by somebody who just hasn't done their work, right? Oh, man. Uh, like, Jessica Smith, I'm sorry, darling. You just, like, like, so much of this article was so wrong, right? Was so insanely wrong. Uh, at the time of the uh, 2005 relaunch, the eighth Doctor Adventures were only a long, uh, the only long-term successful Doctor Who, uh, successful Doctor Who book, Doctor Who works. No, no, they, 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 they no, the, the, the Virgin New Adventures were also successful, which is why they took out the lighter fucking moron. Uh, and then with the same risky TV launch would have been uh, an end of Doctor Who universe. No, Big Finish still going. Parkin had not explored the big parts of Doctor Who's story, the eighth Doctor Adventures at that point, such as the Time War. So it could have easily been reignited the TV show fell. Fortunately, Doctor Who was a big success in the 15th anniversary. This is the dumbest article ever. Uh, anniversary of Dead Doctor show the final battle in the Time War in which the eighth Doctor, in the eighth Doctor Adventures could not. God! Wow, that, okay, that was agony. Okay, that was intense, intense agony. Yes, Jessica, darling, Jessica. God, do your work. Do it the most basic modicum of research. And this is for a Doctor Who article. You think, that, can I comment on this? Do they have commentaries on And uh, Probably not, no. Yeah, no, it's uh, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Uh, um, <laughs> it's bizarre beyond bizarre. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I like how this person got paid for that is beyond me. Uh, we, why? Why? Because uh, uh, we're we're we, we're living in in the uh, in the times of the beast, baby. This is the end of days, and that that article was clearly. Clearly a, uh, a, an indication of that. Uh, uh, what can I tell you? What can I tell you? Uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully, Rusty Davis will come and bring good Doctor and wash away the stupidity that we have lived in, that we have existed in for these past five years. And the dumbest of the dumb got attracted to Doctor Who and they pontificate on it with absolutely no thought that going through their idiot brains whatsoever. As we have just witnessed here today, I bring this to you. I suffer through this for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, can you hit the subscribe button? It's all I ask in return. Uh, uh, and maybe just send me all your money. Either way, whichever one you want to do, I'll go with either one of those options. Or both, maybe. Or both. Or both. You know, like I, I, I often say, uh, if, if going back to the... Uh, uh, the large sex party <laughs> scenario that we started up with uh, the question has always been uh, uh if one if one was going to sleep with victoria waterfield who is a very very attractive a very attractive young lady played by was a young lady played by uh, deborah Watley. which which one of the uh, correct victoria will uh victoria waterfield be would it be young somewhat nervous victoria waterfield very very attractive uh, uh, or would it be Older, uh, uh, downtime esque, more mature. Downtime! For the Virgin New Avengers, you idiot moron! Uh, uh, downtime, you, uh, uh, Victoria. A uh, bit older and knows more what she's doing. And what's the answer? What's the answer? Just as the same as the last, the last, the last question. It's both, baby. Both. My name's Sheila Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. Yeah.